Brian Garcia, hello. It is amazing to finally meet Record Collector Magazine's number one Oasis collector in the entire world. How are you? Um, I'm doing wonderful. Doing. It's good to be here with you guys. It's time for Brian Garcia's top 10 Oasis artifacts. I have, I've never shown anybody this. So this, you can't really see it. It's a, it's an Eldorado strap. So this is uh, the guitar strap that was on the uh, Smash guitar in Paris. So you'll see it if you Google online, like Smash guitar in Paris, you'll see this strap connected to the Smash guitar. So this was the strap that was connected when Liam, you know, wielded the guitar over his head and smashed it. So I think this is kind of interesting. You know, it's not uh, much to look at, but the history is 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 very cool. And you know, it comes with the COA from you know the roadie and everything that that confirmed it. Brian, I've got to ask you a question on that as well. In one interview, Noel has said that Liam smashed his guitar. In another interview, Noel has said that he smashed. Liam's guitar after Liam threw it at him. Do you know which of those is the true account? I, I I have been told, but I'm really not allowed to say. So I'm really not allowed to say. But uh, yeah, it was it was very serious. It was very serious. But I'm I, I'm really not at liberty to to say or repeat that. find i i post you know there's a lot of things that that are wow factors i guess on my instagram or whatever and those tend to be like the the bigger items uh so for for today i kind of we're gonna see some big items but i also pulled out um you know some smaller things that fit in your hand like um this is the um it's water rats uh stage use set list Oh, there's a lot of glare, but and then on the reverse is the uh, handwritten track list for you know their early. This is a real early, probably '94. Um, what around the time of the Water Rat set list? So, so this is pretty rare here. Um, I was informed by uh, Joachim Bangram, who is very knowledgeable in Oasis history. And while it says water rats, he has confirmed that maybe for the first few gigs um, after water rats, they use this same set list. They printed it out. So this may or may not be the set list used at water rats versus this one. So, but this is definitely handwritten, definitely stage used. This was Knowles, 100% Knowles, because Noel always got the uh, handwritten set list. Uh, and all the other members got copies. Very cool. Do you know whose handwriting it is? Yeah, that's um, Phil Smith. He's also, he's still a roadie for Noel right now. Um, he was uh, oh, he's roadie for you know Stone Roses before Oasis, and then uh, he was with Oasis. But yeah, that's all his handwriting. There's some more set lists up here in his hand too. But all those early ones, uh, you know, a lot of people would rightly think, you know, obviously you would think it'd be Noel's, but those early ones in that hand are Phil Smith's. Um, so I guess this would be considered a uh, number eight, which these are handwritten lyrics used in the studio. Uh, these are Gim Archers. I kind of got a, I have a, I have a little, uh, little variety for you guys. So you're going to see handwriting from various people today. And I did, I did it for a specific reason. That way people can become familiar with it. But this is Gim's handwriting, you know. So these were used in the studio. Um, which the second sheet also includes, you know, the, the timing sheet here. And these are all in Gim Archer's hand. So these were his. Some of those are clearly early drafts as well. They're not the final draft. Right. So, 
Studio used with timing sheet. You can see those right there. I know there's a big glare on these, but they're in like protective things right here. So there's that. Let's see. I've got quite a bit of Bonehead's uh, handwritten lyrics. So we'll take a. I've never showed these to anybody. Nobody online has ever seen them. Nobody knows I even own them. I'm gonna. I'll. I'll do something kind of, kind of big here. I've got. I've got several several songs but i think most people would be interested in uh this is if you can read the top this is master plan these are boneheads chord sheets and on the back of master plan he wrote the chords to cast no shadow so this is all boneheads hand that's amazing we have the fame. I don't know if you can see that. We also have master plan here. There's another set of master plan bonehead. Mr. Lover. Bonehead's hand. Girl in the dirty shirt. I love all the be here now era stuff. That's fantastic. The way these were written on all same paper, I'm thinking they were probably used. Uh, for something very important because a lot of these have notes on them. If you see here, you know, hold the A. Some of them are very detailed. I can't imagine Bonehead not knowing the chords and writing these out. You know, when you're on stage, you're not really using something handwritten. So stay young. Um, and there's there's more handwritten lyrics here, which I'll I'll save for another time. We'll see. Yeah, we'll save those for for another interview but yeah i've never shown anybody those nobody even knows i own those and underneath this uh what is it a promo flag i'm not even sure what it is this is a is that one of the flags from nebworth no, but that's in my closet. It it's made out of the same thing, but this looks like it's from a music store. So. There's the couch. And it's pretty battered. You know, from the wear. And the, the cushions are are pretty beat up too you know for all the age that's the definitely maybe coa from bonehead to confirm that was the that was the couch uh, i know i've posted this before but uh i always think this is kind of cool it's uh it's instantly recognizable. So this is a enemy award. So I think this one's kind of interesting because this is uh, instantly recognizable and it also gives kind of like the shock value. Um, this is the uh, enemy award presented to Oasis for best band. You know, there's a few pictures online from Kevin Cummins um, showing Noel holding this particular award. I also have the Wonderwall award, which is just like this one, but uh you know, I just got, this was the first one that was available. So I just kind of grabbed it and pulled it out. So yeah, that one's kind of cool. And on the, people are interested in what the, uh, the bracelet says, it says Oasis. Uh, I think the other one says uh, best single or something like that, but this one says Oasis on it. You know, I think people have uh, have maybe seen this as well, but these right here. Um, so number whatever we're on here is Noel's orange amp that was uh, used to record. Definitely, maybe uh, it was used to record. What's the story? Morning glory. Um, it's seen. Countless uh, live performances, such as um, first ever performance on Jules Holland, 
uh, it's in the whatever music video. Uh, so it's very iconic that uh, that Rolling Stones tongue right there really that that Rolling Stones logo really I guess sets it apart. You know, this was his main amp during you know ninety four, ninety five, ninety six. So these are Gwigsy's amps used uh, at Nebworth and Loch Lomond and uh, Cork, and they are they're also seen in the uh, Do you know what I mean music video in the stack in the back. Now, the difference is, if you were to look at the pictures, if you go online or whatever, the Nebworth, uh, I asked the roadie, I asked him, you know, what, I'm looking at the pictures and the grill, which is this thing in the front, are different than what's on here. And he said that they were replaced. They were, they were taken off for live performances. They were, they were switched to like an open metal, metal grate. And then, but these were the ones that went with it. And these are um, in Man City Blue uh you know color and these were specifically made for for gwigsy and on the inside of the heads and stuff like the serial number says like oasis like zero zero one or something like i can't remember exactly but the serial number specifically say oasis this amp was used at earl's court and it's also seen in the uh roll with it music video Number four is Andy Bell's bass. Uh, this was his favorite bass. Uh, he had three of them. I, I own the other three, too, or the other two. So he had three. He had this one, which is favorite and used for recording. And you know that because the scratch plate here says Bell Oxford and not Burns Bison. Uh, Bell for his last name and Oxford for where he's from. That was his favorite one. So that's what he used for all recordings. This is Gwigsy's bass used on Main Road, Nebworth, Loch Lomond, um, Cork. So you'll see this here. Brilliant. Yeah, it's a jazz bass. This was really exciting when I got that. So that was one of the uh, one of the really exciting things. Have you ever actually had the chance to meet Gwigsy? You know what? I haven't. Uh, that's the one Oasis member that I have not met. This Ludwig drum kit is the the kit that was used uh, to record Morning Glory, parts of Morning Glory, and then Be Here Now. Uh, there are some pictures of Alan playing this kit in studio um, for Be Here Now, uh, and you can you can definitely match the patterns on here because there's no other drum pattern that you know with, with the wrap on these. You know the wrap is very specific. Uh, so it's almost like a fingerprint for guitar or from not for guitars from sorry for drums. Uh, so that was matching. Also, you, I have a COA from Alan, so that's kind of undeniable. And I and I did meet Alan, and when I met Alan in London, I purchased these snares from him. So I got I have this one, which was uh, this one was used at this one was used at Nebworth. That kit was like number what three? These are I guess number two. This snare looks just like the other one. This one was used on MTV Unplugged. Uh, this one was also used in the Champagne Supernova music video. So Champagne Supernova, Nebworth, MTV Unplugged. Um, Main Road, it's really hard to match these, so I'm not sure. But these two are his most popular ones. You can even see Liam playing uh, this snare uh, online. I can't remember what gig it was from, but he's also wearing the Roll With It jacket, which is kind of cool. Uh, which I also have, but is it's in England right now. So this is the last ever 
item signed by Oasis as as a band. So there's pictures of Noel, and you can see Liam and Andy signing it right there. You see the sign, the, the rockin' sign in the back. There's uh and there's Gim signing it. And there's Liam signing it. And this was signed minutes before uh, Liam smashed Noel's guitar, which had, you know, this strap on it. So that was the last item ever fully signed by uh, Oasis. Uh, because minutes after they signed that, they ended up breaking up. And you, in the in the press... I could, you know, press videos and stuff like that. You can see them wearing all the same clothes. So it comes with a, it comes with a beautiful COA from the roadie too. So uh, it, the roadie, you know, gives an account of like how he, when he acquired it, how he acquired it. That's how you, that's how, you know, I came up. That's how, that's why I'm saying like it was signed minutes before because he confirmed it. He wrote that in the letter. He goes just minutes after they signed this, they ended up breaking up. So. But these are, uh, this is probably my favorite piece uh, because it doesn't take up too much space uh, and the history on it is just remarkable. These are the handwritten lyrics to Some Might Say that uh, were written by Noel, but more importantly, they were written by Noel for the purpose uh, to create the single sleeve for that song so noel wrote these lyrics for brian cannon and he gave them to brian and he said i want all of the imagery in these words on a sleeve which is a huge 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 task for anyone uh so he gave them to brian and he said i want every word that's in here on a sleeve that's amazing. So that, that's the handwritten lyric sheet that Noel wrote in 95 and gave to Brian Cannon. And this, so this is before the song was released. Um, right. I mean, could that have been before the song was actually even recorded or was it after the recording of the song? I'm not too sure. Brian did tell me the actual gig um, he got him at. He said they drove on the, he goes, he gave him to me and he goes, we drove on the van on the way back. And, you know, I kept him with me ever since. So. I probably won't all that stuff I, I I shared with you guys. I probably won't ever post online anyway. So uh, I'm really excited to maybe show some more, maybe later on down the line. Brian, that is amazing. Thank you so much for sharing all that unbelievable stuff with us. It's really exciting. And I can't wait to see what you do with it in future. Yeah. Thank you very much for having me, man. It was uh, really cool. And uh, all of its life, it just sits in my closet. So to, uh, you know, could kind of slowly leak it out over time is, is really, is really nice. So that's what it's about.